Hi everyone and welcome to my channel Causes and I Reacts where I learn all things Bara with your help and I just share my Slovak Central European point of view and happy Narati everyone. I have been uh, wished that already and I wanted to explore what this festival is about. I know really frankly nothing about it. So before we get into the video and exploring what that festival actually means, please like this video and click on the subscribe button and turn on the notification. Thank you so much for your support. Okay, so let's begin. Why Hindus celebrate, celebrate Navratri? Let's get into it. Navratri again, you know, is the uh, cognizance of that nurturing aspect of nature. Uh -huh. So here, you know, the goddess is known as Prakriti. And we spoke about Purush and Prakriti, but Prakriti, Mother Nature, again, it's a universal concept. Why is nature considered mother? Because it is nurturing, right? Uh -huh. And Mother Nature or Prakriti is responsible for maintaining the balance. And you see Navaratri coming at a time when there's a change of seasons. Hmm. And a lot of people again would not be aware that Navaratri does not come just once in a year. Okay. It comes four times. Ah. So four times. And if you see, if you observe, what are the timings? You know, the first Navaratri is Chaitra Navaratri. That is right at the beginning of the year, of the Hindu year, you know, in the Indian calendar. So in Maharashtra, we have Gudi Padva, you know, so that is the first day of Chaitra Navratri, actually. Mm. And the ninth day ends with Ram Navmi. So the first Navratri, and that's the change of seasons, you know, it's spring. Mm. And most traditional calendars, actually, interestingly, you know, they began with spring. You know, it doesn't make any sense to have a new year in the middle of winter, mm. right? So all the ancient calendars actually began with spring. Mm. Because spring was renewal, mm. right? So the Chaitra month, which is the first month in, in Indian calendar, it starts with Navratri. And then you have Navratri, which comes in Ashad, month of Ashad, which was before monsoons, just before monsoons. Then you have uh, the Sharad Navratri, which is this one, which comes in October, November, uh, close to autumn. And then you have the Magh Navratri, which was in winters. So every time you observe the nine days, they correspond with the change of season. Mm -hmm. And the Devi Bhagavad Puran actually gives it significance. You know, it tells us that, you know, during this time, people are more susceptible to getting sick. Ah. You know, there's a change happening around them. I and mean, we see that happening, right? Yeah. I mean, right now, also, the weather is so whimsical. You know, mm -hmm. a lot of people are falling sick because of changes in weather, sudden mm -hmm. changes in weather. Mm -hmm. What's so, the, like, I'm asking the doctor in you this because you're a qualified doctor. What's the actual biology behind that? So it's it's just, you know, the sudden changes of temperature. The, you know, sometimes you feel it's hot and, you know, you're switching on the AC and you're sitting in the air conditioner. And then the moment you step out, you know, it's actually cold. And so the changes in temperature and what Navratri actually correlates with is, you know, the fasting. Mm. The fasting makes you aware of what you're doing, what you're putting inside your body. And this time of transition has to be read very carefully. So the Devi Bhagavad Puran, it actually mentions, you know, it talks about the time. It's, it was probably written in a time when there were a lot of people falling sick, you know, during this duration. And um, so it advises you to propitiate, to pray to Goddess Prakriti, to be merciful, you know. Which is again, Divine Feminine. Okay? Divine Feminine. Okay. Mm -hmm. Without, Divine without feminine. saying Durga Ma or Saraswati Ma, yes, all yes, of them together. Yes. It mentions Prakriti. Okay. Devi as Prakriti. So mm. it's nature. It's mm. Mother Nature. Mm. So it has a very, uh, you know, logical reason of celebration. When you're fasting or you're observing a certain ritual, you're more mindful of what you're doing yeah. or what you're putting inside. And, you know, you are, you know, probably uh, taking care of your body much more. Yeah. Mm. Also, it's like the whole logic of intermittent fasting where your body just heals yes. faster when yes. you're fasting. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, and you probably need healing because as a human being, you yes. will kind of fall sick in this change of season. Right. So to deal with that sickness, recover right. and, fast. And building your immunity, right? Mm. Instead of having food that you every day have, you know, which may not be very nutritious, you know, you're advised to have fruits. Mm. Your advice, people ha people eat all all sorts of stuff, huh. but ideally, you know, you should have fruits which provide your vitamins. You know, you can you're allowed milk which provides your protein, so uh, calcium. You know, so they these are um, things that are light on your tummy mm. and they also help build your immunity. Mm. 
so that is the logical reason for navratri uh, you know occurring at this particular time i'm also 110% sure and this is because i've been getting a little bit into astronomy lately there has to be some celestial angle to this some alignment right. of planets or the moon and i'm i'm definitely not sure what it is right. but uh, uh i know for a fact that uh, when you fast and then sit for your meditations the meditations are way deeper it's just much more conducive ah, for definitely. meditation definitely. uh grain actually affects both prayer and meditation like right. in, in eating rice eating wheat eating right. millets comes in the way uh but if you are on an empty stomach you just slip into your meditation yes. very easily yes yes so uh I I mean I'm sure there has to be some angle like that as well. I'm sure I'm sure. Anyways because you know it's it's all calculated according to the tithes. Okay. So that was very interesting. So what I have taken away from from this is that it almost um correlates with the paganism in the west uh, or like it's not even paganism but you know like obviously with the four seasons and in the paganism you had the winter or spring solstice um and that that was kind of worship so it almost seems similar uh what what you would do there but ex- uh but i just wonder yeah I- i'm sure all of these kind of rituals have some sort of um you know constellation stars would have you uh, reasons behind them but it is very very interesting um i i learned about the mother nature uh, today uh, which is wonderful so please do let me know what do you do during this um uh dur- during this festival what happens i'm i'm hearing that there's a lot of cleanings we do i think the spring cleaning here is quite popular but i would just wonder how you do that it looks like there is fasting associated and certain kinds of food um please feel free to enlighten me how you celebrate and what happens in the comments below and with that being said uh, i think that's it for today's video if you did like it please give a thumbs up share a like and subscribe to this video and i'll see you in the next one until then Sending much, much love. You take care. Bye-bye.